Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. And once you get two or three brokers like that on your, in your Venus flytrap, you won't have enough time to close all the deals you'll get. I mean, hundreds. How come you didn't think of it? Because like I said, you're thick as shit. Yes, sir, in the back. Okay, so you're going to pay the business broker's commission but when you do the seller financing, but at least on your first uh, deal or two, uh, is he going to like forego that commission till later down the road? Because you don't have any money. No, no, well, exactly. He's going to have to forego the commission. But you'll have a, a, a contract but with I thought, him. I thought brokers are, these business brokers are assholes and they want their money up front. Well, no, no. What they want is a steady stream of money. And the steady stream of money is you're going to do, I mean, and you can legitimately point to, there's, uh, we have a thousand kids that have done 50 deals on the planet. At least a thousand kids that have done at least 50 deals on the planet. Just imagine if you had been the broker on one or two of those. It's like, instead of taking candy from a baby, it's like giving candy to a baby. Yes, Dan, you are a genius. Thank you very much. Because I am. But my 140 IQ, which is nothing to brag about, is not why I've done all these deals. It's because I've always pushed the envelope from when I was a little kid. I always wanted to mow, mommy, mow. Okay, yes, sir. What's the typical uh, broker fee percentage? Uh, it, it varies from 3 to 10. 10% 10 on little chicken shit deals, 3% on big deals. But just call it average 5-6. Five, 5-6. Six. Five, six. And they, they, will, they, they will pick you up at the airport. You know, they will introduce you to their 11-year-old virgin daughter. I mean, you have no idea. Because other than the kids that have come through this program, nobody does that. Yes, sir. Is there a, like a special contract or anything that you have to sign with the business broker? Or is it all handshake? No, 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 no handshake shit. Okay. No handshake shit, you know. Um, it reminds me of a story. Um, I'm in Israel. Uh, signing a contract with the uh, Israeli National Oil Company. And while I'm at the Hilton there in Tel Aviv, uh, there's a guy down at the end of the bar, and, I, and it was Mark Spitz. I didn't recognize him. Mark Spitz, the guy that won seven gold medals, you know, in the Munich, I think it was the Munich Olympics, whatever. And uh, he comes down, and says, is it, can I buy you a drink? I said, yeah, yeah. And he says, uh, who are you waiting to see? And I said, I'm wait, wait, waiting to uh, see Minister Modai, who was the head of the uh, Israeli National Oil Company. Oh, I'm here to see. I forget who he was there. To. And he said, how long have you been waiting? I said, well, seven days. Are you Jewish? I go, no. Well, I'm a goddamn Jew, and I've been here 11 days. And he says, don't you recognize me? I go, no. Mark Spitz, but I didn't recognize him. Anyway, so when we, when we, 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 we go to the, uh, to, to, uh, I, I got tired of waiting. When it got to 10 days, I said, fuck it, we're leaving. Now, my two partners were Jews. Okay, and I said, so it's the Sabbath. We're leaving. I don't give a fuck if it's Sabbath. If they're not going to sign the deal with the Sabbath. So we're on our way to the airport, and uh, we get run down by military and police cars, pull us over and arrest us. And they take us back, and uh, the, uh, we wound up signing the deal on the Sabbath. And we got the rabbi of Israel, the head muckety-muck, the top guy of Israel, to figure out a way why it was all right to do a deal on the Sabbath. And, uh, and, I, and I've got it in paper someplace, and I talk about it in my book. And the, the Hasidic Jews and the, you know, the Orthodox Jews all tell me I'm full of shit that we didn't sign it on the Sabbath, which I can tell you. The Sabbath, uh, you can look at the calendar, and, but they figured out a way to make it legitimate. Uh, getting back to the business broker, uh, the, uh, when they know, because we were going to be a stream of money, I was going to invest $62 million in Israel looking for oil and gas. And then the uh, Lebanese war broke out, and I get a phone call from the then head of the Israeli National Oil Company, who was a two-star general in the army. Everybody's in the army. And he says, Mr. Pena, we're not, now he's dead, so I don't mind saying this. We're not having this call, but we have to renege on our contract with you. Now, I'd already spent $7 million. And we're, we apologize, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure that uh, 
you know, the prayers and good karma. I'm not interested in that shit, you know. He was a PhD from MIT. And so now, then I got to go back and explain to the two big synagogues in New York, Manhattan, that I collected money from, why we weren't going forward with the deal. And, um, but it, it made me think, getting back to the business broker, when they believe that you uh, are a conduit of business, they will bring you more business than you can ever say grace over. And virtually nobody does it, except some of the kids that I've trained here. And business brokers are the lowest form of life. They just are. You know, they're, they're bottom feeders. Okay, somebody else had their hand up. No. Okay, so did I answer the question about the business broker? You understand? Okay, that means yes. Right now, speaking of business brokers, business brokers are hurting because the commercial deals are less because to go to a commercial bank to have a deal done now, the interest rates are, I won't say exorbitant, but they're exorbitant. So they're hurting. So this is a, a good tool, uh, and I don't like the tool chest uh, analogies, but it's another arrow to put in your quiver for getting deals done. Every deal known to man can be financed. Uh, in our model, it all starts with an embarrassing seller finance offer, like the Persian rug, like I, I told you. $10,000 down to, you know, $100. Okay, well, if there's no more comments, uh, we have dinner where tonight? In there? I guess so. Some nights we have it in the pub. Um, I'm going to ask again. 5.30? 6? 6.30. Okay, good. I'll have an easy night tonight. Um, and uh, tonight you, uh, I will talk to you again after dinner. And um, we'll see you uh, about 7 o'clock. Thank you.